All right, welcome to this tutorial. I'm going to create a Wheel of Fortune. Well, I've actually already created it some year ago or some, yeah, I don't know exactly, but maybe one and a half year, a year ago. And I get a lot of questions on how you can show the actual values of the symbols here, because this wheel now, if I spin the wheel now, it is more like a visual wheel, like a real Wheel of Fortune. It will stop on a symbol, but I don't actually calculate the symbol and show it somewhere. So that's why I created this little field down here, this little div down here, where I'm going to display the name and show you how to calculate. Uh, for example, this is the ladybug, so it's going to display the ladybug. Uh, and if it's a dolphin, it's going to display the dolphin. So I'm going to show that in this video. So I'm not going to show you from scratch on how I do this, but I'm going to link to that old video where I probably have an even more strange English accent in that video because it's one of the first videos I did, I think, but I'm going to link to it down below in the comments. And also make sure to subscribe to my channel and click that notification button so you know when I release more new great stuff. All right, so let's get started. We know how this works. We can click this button and it will spin, spin. And you can see that I have this nice little blur also to make this motion blur effect. And it stops on a symbol. So I'm going to go back inside of the code editor and I provided a link also for you with this code. This is kind of the starter code. So this is where I ended the last video and I'm going to implement this functionality where we actually can calculate the value also. So what I did here is I have an index file. I have three different images, a marker, the wheel and the button. And then I created this one for this video. It's a div with a class of display where I'm going to display the value. So that's the only thing I did inside of this index HTML file. Then I've added some styles to it here. This is the new div that I created. Down below here, I can show you, I have an animation with the blur that I show you this motion blur. So that is the one I'm setting here. And the animation is set to 10 seconds. This is hard coded into the CSS, but you can of course create it dynamically with JavaScript if you want to have it more dynamic than it is now. And then I have this script. So this is everything there is, roughly 35 rows of code with all the comments. So it's probably just half of it to make this work. So what I do here is that I grab the div with the wheel and the start button because I need, for example, to set some event listeners on the start button. Then I have a let here, a variable that I call deg, and this is going to be the degrees that the wheel is turning. So I set this add event listener of click. This is when you click the button. I set the pointer events to none. I don't want the user to be able to click the button while the wheel is spinning. Then I calculate the new rotation, and this is also hard coded in. I start at 5,000 and I end at 10,000. So somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 degrees. And as you probably know, one whole rotation is 360 degrees. So this is going to spin a lot of times around and then stop. So I do this for 10 seconds. You can see that I set a transition on the wheel that is set to 10 seconds. And I also have an ease out on it. Then I rotate the wheel and I give it the degrees that I calculate here. So this will set a degree to, for example, let's say that this one is 4,533 or something. Then it will set that degree here. And then I apply the blur class that I showed you in the CSS. So this degree is actually not what we want. We want to have the real degree somewhere between zero and 360. And that's what I do here on the transition end. First, I remove the blur. I activate the button again so the user will be able to click it. I set the transition to none again. And then here you can see that I convert this degree to actual degrees. So I use the modulus uh, against uh, 360 and it will give us um, the rest of the degrees. And that's the actual degree that the wheel is on. And then I transform the wheel to that actual degree and that will not transform it at all because it is what is stopped on up here. I just transform the de degrees to actual degrees so it's in the same position. So that's everything I do with the wheel. And now I'm going to add in that functionality to actually grab those values also. So the first thing I got to do is to actually get a reference to this div, the display div. So I create a const display. And from the document dot, I have the query selector. And I'm going to grab that div dot display. And then we also need something to calculate the zone size, because if we look at the wheel here, you can see that there's eight zones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
And that means if you divide the whole wheel 360 degrees with eight, we get 45 degrees. So each segment on the wheel is 45 degrees. So I'm going to have a variable for that. Let, and I call it uh, zone size equal 45. And we can mark it with deg. So we know that it's degrees. Okay. Then I'm going to have a lookup object for all the different symbols on the wheel. So I create a const symbol segments. Or we can call them zones, actually, to be more consistent. Symbol zones. And we have eight of them. So the first one. And this is going to be counterclockwise because when the wheel is rotating like this, clockwise. So for example, it's on the ladybug and then it rotates clockwise and then it's going to rotate. So this little guy here will be at the marker. So when the ladybug rotates clockwise, this little guy here will come first to the marker and so on. So that is actually counterclockwise. So that's why I have to specify them counterclockwise in this lookup object. So for example, I'm going to have the frog to start with. I'm going to reload this one. I start at the middle here. So this is the frog. So we're going to have the frog, snail, dolphin, ladybug, koala, unicorn, dragon, and snowman. So that's the ones that we're going to have. Number two is going to be the snail. Three is going to be the dolphin. Four is going to be the ladybug. Five is going to be the koala. Six is going to be the unicorn. Seven is going to be the dragon. And the last one, the eight, is going to be the snowman. So that is our lookup object. So when we calculate the zones, for example, if we're in zone four, we're going to grab the ladybug from this lookup object. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So we have to modify some stuff here. In this uh, click event here, we want to reset the display when the user clicks the button and spins the wheel. So the display dot inner HTML is going to equal, and we have this little dash sign like that. So that is everything we have to do in this click event for the start button. Then down below here, in this event that's called transition end, and this will trigger when the transition is finished. We're going to call a function. Calculate and display the winning symbol like this. And we're going to create a function that we call handle win. And we also send in the actual degree so that we know where the, the wheel stops, on what degree the wheel stops. All right, so we go up here somewhere and create a function, const handle win. We have a parameter that's called actual deg. And as always, I'm creating arrow functions. You can, of course, use regular functions if you want to do that instead. And the first thing I want to do here is to actually calculate the winning number, the symbol number that we have here. So I create a const here and I call it winning symbol number. And I'm going to calculate this from the actual degree that we send into this function as an argument. And I'm going to divide that with our zone size. And that will give us the number, the zone that we're in. But this can actually be like a decimal number, and that's no good. So we're going to math.seal like this. So if this is, for example, is 2.5, we know that we're actually in the third zone. So we round it up to three, and then we can grab that little dolphin up there. Uh, I have some error here. It's strange, it should be blue, this one here. There's something that's wrong, I think, but I don't know why it isn't displaying correctly, but it seems to be fine. Okay, display dot inner HTML equals symbol segments. No, we call it symbol zones, like this. And this is our little lookup object here. So from our symbol zones, we're going to get the property that it's the winning symbol number. 
I don't know why it's, yeah, it's of course here. Yeah. Should be an equal sign there. So this will work now, hopefully. So what we're doing here, we call this function, we send in the actual degree. That's the degree that the wheel stopped on. And then I calculate the actual zone from that degree. And I grab that zone from this lookup object up here. And I display it in our display div. So I save this file, I go back to my browser, reload it, and click the spin wheel button and see what happens. Yeah, it's the frog. I spin again. It's the dolphin, so it's working. And this is how you do it. It's actually quite simple, to be honest. As you can see, there's not much code to it. You just have to keep track of the different zones and how many degrees each zone is. And then you can calculate it like this. And this is, of course, assume that all the zones are equal size. They are all 45 degrees, so you have to do it differently if you have different sized zones and it will be a little bit more advanced. But this is pretty much it for this one. I've got a lot of questions about this the last year, so I thought it would be great to create a video about it. All right, make sure to subscribe to my channel and support me and hit that notification button and see you in another one.